Hi, and welcome to this video on Real Life Applications, Part 2, brought to you by the Answer Series. In Example 1, we are given midpoints P, Q and R on the sides of triangle ABC. We are told that those midpoints are joined to form a smaller triangle and that the process is repeated on the smaller triangle and then repeated indefinitely. The perimeters of all the triangles, including triangle ABC, are added to obtain 44 units. What we need to do is calculate the perimeter of triangle ABC. I want you to pause the video and try the question on your own. Then I will give you a quick hint and then another opportunity to try on your own. In this particular question, the fact that the line segment joining the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is equal to half the length of the third side is very, very useful to know. So if we have a look at that, joining the midpoints P and Q gives us a length exactly half of the length of BC. Joining the midpoints P and R gives us a length exactly half the length of AC. And finally, joining the midpoints Q and R gives us a length exactly half the length of AB. Think about that, pause the video and try one more time on your own. In order to explain what we are going to do, we are going to let P be the perimeter of triangle ABC. This means that our perimeters will be P and then a half P, which we figured out using the midpoint theorem. And then that perimeter will halve again and give us a quarter P. So we can use the sum to infinity formula because our R value is a half and that lies between minus one and one. Our A value will be P and our sum to infinity is given as 44. Substituting the relevant values into the formula and solving that formula, we get P equal to 22 units. So the perimeter of triangle ABC is 22 units. In example two, we have a similar logic with midpoints, but a completely different situation. So what we have here is a large square, and the midpoints of that large square are then joined to form another square and this process continues. I want you to pause the video, see if you're able to work out the areas of the squares that are being generated and answer the question on your own. Then I will give you a hint and then you will try again one more time on your own. So essentially, if you know how to work out the area of a square, the question is really easy. There are two ways to do this. We can either multiply the side by the side, so the first area is very trivial. We also need to remember that there's a very important alternative method, and that is half the product of the diagonals. So if you multiply the two diagonals and take half of that result, you also get the area of the square. Pause the video and try this one more time, and then I'll explain the logic to you. So the first square we can write down by inspection without showing any working or doing much thinking will be 12x by 12x, which gives us 144x squared for that first area. The second square may look difficult, but actually, if you keep your head, the diagonal of the second square is 12x, and obviously diagonals are equal in both directions. Diagonals are 12x, and the diagonal product divided by two gives the area of a square. So for the second area, we are simply going to make use of the fact that we are taking half of 12x squared equal to 72x squared. For the third square, just to be 100% convincing in our argument, we're going to make use of the fact that we have this side joining midpoints of a triangle and therefore exactly half the length of the side of the square because the triangle tucked away in this top corner here, this triangle, we know that the base of the triangle is 12x and using the midpoint theorem, 
the line joining the midpoints is 6x. The area of square 3 is therefore 6x all squared, which is 36x squared. So we've established that the ratio of these areas is a half, which means we can use the sum to infinity formula because a half lies between the boundaries of minus 1 and 1. We know that our first square has an area of 144x squared. Substituting the values into the formula produces a sum to infinity of 288x squared. Without the value of x being given to us, we can't give an answer as a numeric value. We need to give the answer in terms of x. The final question involves circles and a rectangle. We are told that we have a circle with a diameter of 32 centimeters placed inside the rectangle. It touches the sides of the rectangle in three places. What's important about that is that the distance across, which is the diameter of the circle, is also the width of the rectangle. We are also told that more circles are placed inside the rectangle with each circle touching the circle below it in exactly one place and with its center on the line PQ, with P and Q midpoints of the sides they are on. In other words, PQ is the line running down the center of the rectangle. Each new circle is one quarter of the area of the circle below it, and this process is continued indefinitely. I want you to pause the video and try each question on your own. Then I will give you a hint, and then you can try again on your own. So in the first question, what you need to think about is the fact that you can actually work out the area of the circle. We know that the area of the circle is given by pi r squared. And if the diameter of the large circle is 32, then its radius must be 16. So to start with, we have a circle with area pi times 16 squared, which is going to give us 256 pi. If we take a quarter of that, we will get a value of 64 pi which means that if our radius for the first circle was 16, then the radius for the second circle must be 8, because radius squared is 64. I want you to pause the video and finish the question on your own now. So our radii are 16, 8, and 4, which means our diameters are 32, 16, and 8. There's a definite ratio of a half, which again means we can use the sum to infinity formula because again, a half lies between minus one and one. The first diameter is 32, and using the sum to infinity formula, substituting in 32 and the ratio of a half, the maximum length of that rectangle is going to be 64 centimeters. So the dimensions are the width and the length, 32 centimeters by 64 centimeters. The last question in this video is quite challenging. We need to work out the area of the unshaded region, correct to two decimal places. Pause the video and try the question on your own. If you got stuck, you can't answer the question directly. So try to work out the sum of the areas of all of the circles added together, as well as the area of the rectangle, and then think about what you can do from there. Okay, so we've already worked out the area of the circle in question 3.1. We know that the area of the large circle is 256 pi, and we were told that the relationship between the areas of the circles was a quarter. So we can use the sum to infinity and work out that the sum of all the areas will total 1024 over 3 times pi. If we work that out correct to two decimal places, we get 1072 comma three three centimeters squared. That is the area of all of the shaded circles. To work out the unshaded section, we simply need to take the area of the rectangle, which is 32 by 64, and subtract the sum of all the circle areas, which we said was 1072 comma three three, and that will give us 975 comma six seven centimeters squared. This is a challenging video, but you will notice the repetition of method using the sum to infinity throughout this particular batch of questions. 
And if you go through each question a few more times, make sure you understand the logic that was used. I'm confident that you will be able to answer any other questions of a similar nature that you come across in the future. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by the Answer Series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.